morning, everyone. It's after 8 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. We have two speakers today. Uh, Dr. Zog, he's one of our own. He's the interns. And then followed by Dr. Embody. morning. So I'm going to talk about a subject that uh, I'm sure I'll become more accustomed to learning about as I go on through residency, but um, I titled my talk, My, my Left Eye is Blind. We're going to go through um, a case presentation and we're going to learn what the signs and symptoms are of ocular lymphoma and uh, options for diagnosis and treatment, and then we'll talk about just a few take-home points. So the first thing, um, we had a 63-year-old male who was brought over to my continuity clinic on Wednesday afternoon for a CNS um, lymphoma. That's what he'd been diagnosed with. And uh, the primary team just wanted us to rule out any uh, intraocular involvement. And they, they reported that the patient had n absolutely no visual complaints, which I think is a common thing in that our residents experience. So the chief complaint for the patient was my left eye is blind. I can only see shadows out of that left eye. Um, so as, as we know, the, the chief complaint is the first part of taking a history and anything. And uh, this wasn't done in this patient before he came over to us. So he described a sudden loss of vision about three to five days before presenting to us. There was no pain. Um, he could just see shadows out of that left eye. He said his vision hadn't changed much since then. No improvement, no worsening. His right eye also seemed a little bit blurry to him. Um, he had a headache kind of in the back of his head. No scalp tenderness, no jaw claudication of any kind. Um, he was diagnosed with B-cell lymphoma in September. I just saw this patient a few weeks ago. He was treated with uh, six cycles of R-CHOP. And then two days ago, he presented to the ER with new onset of ataxia and altered mental status. And they did an MRI at that time and found um, some CNS lesions likely representing lymphoma. This was all presented to us from the patient and the family. This is all their, their history. Um, so to look back at his past medical history, he... They reported that they were treated for some type of uveitis, the patient was back in September, um, that didn't seem to respond to topical prednisone. And we couldn't get a whole lot more information about it. We didn't have any um, of his uh, chart information either. So he had um, chronic lymphocytic leukemia diagnosed in 2004, which switched over to B-cell lymphoma in 2011. He had also been diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2004 and then just some other minor um, past medical stuff that's not really pertinent. Um, in talking to him about review of systems, he'd been having fevers, weight loss, muscle pain. He was tired, um, a lot of easy bruising. He was having a hard time walking and just felt overall confused. Um, when we checked his vision on his right eye, he was 2070, pinholed to 2060. His left eye, he was light perception only. Um, the right pupil was pretty sluggish and his left, he had a left uh, APD. Um, his motility had a little bit of abduction deficit in his left eye, but otherwise they were pretty full. Um, he seemed to have confrontational fields in his right eye that were full, but his left eye he couldn't perform anything. On, uh, we did it perform eventually a Humphrey visual field, which just showed, showed kind of global depression in his right eye, not really any um, local or uh, focal findings on that. And color plates, he was one out of 12 in his right eye, and he was kind of confused by that because he had apparently had normal color vision his whole life. And again, we couldn't really check his left eye. He also stated that red things didn't quite seem as red to him in his, in his right eye. His pressures were upper end to normal, 22 and 21. Um, on exam, he didn't really have anything externally. His V1, 2, and 3 were totally intact, no anophthalmus or proptosis, um, really not a whole lot on exam, even looking at his anterior chamber, he was nice, deep and quiet, no cell or flare at all. Um, his vitreous, he had a nice clear view, no haze. Um, his optic nerves, there was no pallor and no edema at all, and no hemorrhages, a health, healthy looking nerve. And then uh, all the retina and everything actually looked really nice and, and normal as well. So on the MRI, which the primary team had when they pr sent the patient to us, um, it had leptomeningeal enhancement in the posterior fossa. And they also had a lot of hyperintense flare in the optic chiasm and also the um, prechiasmatic and retrochiasmatic um, optic tract and nerve. And it had some involvement of the optic radiations as well. So pretty extensive visual pathway involvement on the MRI. 
so we came to the conclusion, I saw this patient with Dr. Petty, and uh, Dr. Henderson helped, not Henderson, I always call her Bonnie Henderson. Bonnie helped us out, <laughs> the neuro op fellow. Um, 63-year-old <laughs> male with uh, visual pathway involvement of CNS lymphoma, but it, he didn't have any evidence of intraocular involvement. But he had evidence of optic neuropathy really in both eyes with the loss of color vision and red desaturation in his right eye and then the APD on the left. So really the treatment for this is just to treat the underlying lymphoma in his case. So with primary CNS lymphoma, um, the typical onset is in the mid-50s. It's really rare in, in children or adolescents. The incidence is increasing for unknown reasons. Um, one of the strange things about this is there's not really any lymphatic tissue in the CNS or within the orbit, within the intraocular space at least. And so it's kind of a, a strange um, cancer in that sense. And it's reported that if somebody has primary CNS lymphoma that they'll have um, ocular lymphoma in about 25% of cases. So how are they gonna present to us? I think uh, the main thing, hopefully, is that they'll have some sort of visual complaint um, they might come to us as a rule out, as this guy did in this case, but they might notice visual, someone might notice visual field defects, um, difficulty moving their eyes, and some sort of optic neuropathy, nystagmus, something like that. Um, they could also present with intraocular inflammation, and usually there's two different types. There's vitreoretinal retinal lesions that you'll see in, um, on in the fundus, and these are usually associated with an independent primary CNS lymphoma. Or you can have this, the uveal type, which is typically a metastatic origin from a systemic lymphoma. Um, and then the other patients are, what we get a lot are the patients who are diagnosed with primary CNS lymphoma. And they could have ocular involvement, whether it's metastatic spread, uh, direct spread, or it could be an independent uh, finding as well. The classic board's presentation for, their, for us as residents is uh, some sort of posterior uveitis with a lack of response to topical steroids, which it sounds like this guy had some of that, and it's classically one of the masquerade syndromes in uveitis, one of the big ones. So with primary intraocular lymphoma, what you'll normally see is vitreous cell, um, and then uh, looking for the lesions, you'll see kind of geographic subretinal um, infiltrative masses, and sometimes you'll have little satellite lesions around the, the main um, cancer. It's bilateral in a majority of cases, 80 to 90 percent. Um, less common findings are intraretinal hemorrhages um, and retinal artery obstructions. On FA, the classic finding is hypofluorescence early and then late hyperfluorescence. I don't know how well this it projects okay. You can kind of see the white yellow areas um, indicating subretinal involvement with, um, they call it kind of this stippling over the top um, of these white lesions. Just another fundus photo of kind of similar things. This one's a little bit too dark, but it was a good uh, montage of, of kind of a full retina, what it might look like if you see a patient with this. Uh, this is an FA showing some uh, hyperfluorescence. Some patients may present if they have excessive intraocular inflammation with uh, hypopion as well. The uh, primary uveal lymphoma, they describe this a little bit differently. It's multifocal creamy yellow choroidal infiltrates. And again, it's associated with lymphoma that's more of a systemic origin. It's uh, metastatic. And a lot of times this has few vitreous cells. Um, and then FA, you might see blockage from the uh, pigment clumps. On ultrasound, usually what you'll see is just diffuse uveal thickening kind of just behind the retina. Um, uh, this might light up on the ultrasound. And this is a picture of kind of a, I, I couldn't, I'd have to have Dr. Harry help us with that one, but it just looks like there's something behind the eye, something bright back there. Um, so how do we diagnose this? A lot of times these patients come with a CBC that might be suspicious, but uh, MRI of the brain and LP um, really, you got to get some cells, and you might find them on lumbar puncture, or um, you might be able to biopsy a lesion that you find outside of the eye on imaging. Um, but really, for us, where we might be involved is uh, with pars plantar vitrectomy, and you send that for cytology. Um, a lot of times, the first sample can be negative, and so if you have a high clinical suspicion, you do need to get a second sample. And you can also do a chorioretinal incisional biopsy on an area that you might not think would have any visual potential in the future as well to get that. And there's some studies about uh, IL-6 and IL-10 concentrations. If the IL-10 to IL-6 ratio is greater than one, that's suggestive of uh, lymphoma. 
so kind of the diagnostic tree here. First, you have to have clinical suspicion for ocular lymphoma. Um, you do a fundus exam. If you can't really see um, the vitreous very well, you might do a fluorescein angiography. A lot of these patients will get one of those anyway, um, and you'll see the lesions there. This kind of brings you back to one of the main things that you need to do is get an MRI, make sure there's no CNS involvement. If somebody presents with primary intraocular lymphoma, their chance of having CNS lymphoma is a lot higher for some reason. It's up in the 50 to 60% range in a lot of studies. But uh, so try to get some tissue. Lumbar puncture is probably the first thing that you want to do. If you can get some cells that are positive there, then you'll get an oncologist involved. Um, otherwise, you might turn to vitrectomy. If that's positive, then you turn to treating that. If that's negative, then you might have to repeat that vitrectomy if you're really uh, suspicious or biopsy one of the areas that is really suspicious. On uh, pathology, you'll see uh, malignant lymphoid cells, and the features of these are usually the large cell lymphomas, and they're, they're generally B cell type. Um, and basically, a lymphoid cell would have pleomorphic nuclei and scant cytoplasm. Um, and you might see a lot of necrotic lymphocytes as well. This is a typical um, cytology, so this might be a pars plantar vitrectomy with some cells that are smeared out on a plate. Um, you can see in the, kind of at the top there, a, a mitotic figure, and just a lot of atypical looking lymphocytes with the clump chromatin, multiple nuclei on them, that sort of thing. Uh, another kind of close up of some atypical lymphocytes there. On histology, this is a view of the retina, maybe a, a choreal retinal biopsy that you might do. Um, the R obviously is the retina, the C is the choroid. And the arrow is pointing to the, the, lymph, the lymphoma cells. And you can see a separation there between Bruch's membrane and the RPE. And a lot of times these patients have kind of an RPE detachment that you can see on um, imaging and also on, on fluorescein angiography. So that's kind of a typical what a typical biopsy would look like. And the choroid in this picture on the right has a lot of, you can see a lot of blue cells in there um, that is indicative of chronic inflammation as well. So the treatment of primary intraocular lymphoma, um, generally speaking, it seems like radiation therapy is the typical treatment um, to the eye. And what I've found is that the prognosis is not very good. You, the survival is about five years just in, in intraocular lymphoma. And the recurrence rate is pretty high from the studies that I was reading. Um, so some groups are moving more towards chemotherapy and actually intravitreal injection of like methotrexate and things like that. And it seems like the success rate's a little bit better with that type of treatment. Um, so generally a good initial response to radiation, but relapse occurs uh, in, in a majority of cases. Um, you end up with a lot of atrophic subretinal scars if you're able to get this into remission. So you'll lose some, some sight out of those areas. Um, that's probably pretty much it there. So I think what I got out of this, um, number one, Dr. Vitali kind of gets this into our minds pretty early on, that you need, we need to diagnose uveitis and not just treat it initially. But if you have something that is not responding to treatment, then think about what are the masquerade symptoms of uveitis and especially this, um, excuse me, lymphoma. And really tissue is the issue in, in all um, oncology. So you need to get cells by vitrectomy or lumbar puncture. And I think for me, not all rule outs are asymptomatic despite what they come to you as. And then make sure that you just take a look at the whole patient when you're examining um, the eye. So you might make a, a systemic diagnosis that'll really change the patient's life. So that's it, any questions? Yeah. So the, the real key is just to get them, it just needs to be sent to pathology for cytology. That's the real key. And um, I don't, Dr. Mamos, do you get these at all? Or do they go over to the hospital when they?
so when I was reading about it, they usually do recommend like a 40 cc pad to really just get as much fluid as you can. So, because there's a lot of study, you'll, you'll send it for psychology, you'll send it for flow psychometry, um, and then just kind of a regular in your differential, you might send it for infectious things and PCR, all those kind of things. But yeah. So we, we did not think his prognosis was very good. Um, we basically told him that it was unlikely that he would get any better, e despite treatment. But uh, we're going to have him come back and just see how he's doing. He's, I checked up on his chart last night, and he's, having, he's had chemotherapy. And they, they seem, he seemed to have a, s a good symptomatic response to the chemotherapy as far as their written neuro exam. But I don't know ocular findings if he's had any changes. Yeah, Bob. So generally B cell lymphoma, but there were there were probably five or six case reports in the um, literature that were T cell. I didn't look into that.